Welcome back to 8 Resolves and another standard event. Today's deck is Azorius Soldiers. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Here at It Resolves, we love to have fun, play different decks, and hopefully learn a little something along the way. Lately, we have been really diving into the standard events and trying to learn those, trying to try different decks, see how great we can be, and it's not going super well, I'll be honest. Uh, this past week, we have really not done well. We have gotten one win uh, over the course of the last three days uh, and equating to three events, which feels really terrible, but you know what? It's okay. We are here with a, I think, a really good deck, and I know for the meta, generally speaking, a very good deck. Uh, and so we are going to test this out and hopefully do a little bit more with it today. I did make a couple of subtle changes. So for anybody that doesn't know, this is Azorius Soldiers. This is one of the top ranking decks in the best of one meta right now, up there with mono black, mono red, things like that. Uh, the, the reason it's up there for best of one uh, is in particular because it's very aggressive and it has a lot of tech pieces uh, that really set it apart from a lot of the other maybe creature heavy decks. And what I mean by that is we get to slow down non-creature spells because of the tech that Thalia brings. Uh, one of the cards I added in was so Sun Gold Sentinel. This exiles cards from the graveyard, which just means that reanimator decks, anything like that, we get to shut down immediately. Uh, we do have the uh, evasive way way of attacking him with a lot of different things with Harbin, so whenever you attack with five or more soldiers, all of them get plus one, plus one, and flying until the end of the turn. Brutal Cathar, our exile mechanic on a stick, so very powerful. Uh, a card that I actually haven't used in this deck before, but I think is quite good, is obviously Kylie... Kyla's Reconstruction, excuse me, uh, being able to look at the top seven cards of your deck, get a lot of creature cards out of that, and just throw them onto the battlefield is certainly a very powerful ability. Uh, I will say in practice, every once in a while these get stranded in hand. Uh, I don't know the exact land count, 23, so we're just below average, but we should be able to make something happen there, even if it's just for one or two. Uh, we do, of course, have uh, Myrel's Shield of Argive sitting at the top. This is one of the best cards for the deck. For four mana, you get a three, four. During your turn, opponents can't activate spells or activate abilities of artifacts, creatures, or enchantments, so it's a little bit of a prison, quote-unquote, mechanic. It's minimal. Uh, but whenever it attacks, you actually create X11 colorless soldier artifact creature tokens, where X is the number of soldiers you control. Obviously, we are a soldier's deck. We've got a lot of them, so that really helps us out quite a bit. Uh, Denik also shuts down graveyards, and lifelink uh, is always nice. Valiant Veteran, Lords are bored. We've got Recruitment Officer, going to allow us to get more cards out of our deck. So really just a lot of powerful things. Oh, Sky Strike Officer giving us some card draw. Uh, so all that to say, we have got quite a lot of tech in what is generally thought of as a very creature aggro-y style deck. Uh, but I'm really excited to try this one out. I think this gives us our best shot at least this week. Uh, of getting some wins, which is really, really awesome. So I'm excited to try this out. One thing I will mention, guys, on uh, Mishra's Titan, uh, the deck that we played just a couple days ago, somebody did give us some suggestions of cards we can try. If that's something you want to see, a version two, just let me know. I would like to try it again. I think that deck has some fun little interactions and things that we could try. Uh, and I do think uh, Lu Luis, I believe, is the one that leave, leave, uh, left, wow, some suggestions. Uh, and so Luis, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. It means a lot that you guys took the time to do that, so I would like to take advantage of that. Uh, but let's uh, let's jump in. Let's do it. Let's see what we can do with this deck. I think it'll be a good one. It'll be a fun one at the very least. So let's go for it. All right, guys, and here we are for game number one. This should be a really fun one. Um, I do think. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we can go with this. It's not an amazing hand by any means, but I think it's certainly one that we can run with, and uh, hopefully, hopefully we can get some really cool stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and play the Yodian Frontliner first. Uh, the reason being, when this attacks, another target creature you control gets that plus one, plus one, so this just allows us to be a bit of uh, the aggressive side of the deck, which is usually a good thing. Uh, we also are going to get to just basically flood the field this turn. Uh, which isn't anything amazing, right? I mean, this is, you know, a Tainted Adversary, which looks to mean we are going to be against, like, a Zombies deck. Potentially Demir, but most likely maybe even just Mono Black. I think we just take the two. I'm not overly worried about this. Um, we can certainly offset that damage pretty quickly, uh, given our decks. So, uh, okay, so it's not even Zombies. It is just, you know, powerful decks. So that'll be fun. Uh, sure, let's go ahead and do this. Let's do this. Let's go ahead and set up a Siege Veteran. 
the reason being, obviously, when we do this, we actually, um, basically, you know, anytime one of our soldiers dies, we actually get a 1-1 token in response. So, uh, this sets up a little bit of a, uh, an ability where we basically aren't going to, to be losing uh, board presence as often. Obviously, they're going to go ahead and sh just kill that as quickly as possible, which makes a lot of sense. Um, so the question becomes, do we want to double block and try and kill this? Um, I don't think so. I don't love this thing attacking, obviously, but uh, I think we are just going to go for the, uh, the bigger plays. We'll see. Um, Alright, let's do this. Let's do this. Uh, we are going to auto pay, which does mean we have to unfortunately take a little bit of damage, but let's go ahead and attack in here. Uh, I'm going to throw the the damage around a little bit and now I mean again we're in a race scenario uh, and we've got a lot of board presence right now and so the idea being that hopefully we can just outpace them uh, and I mean if there's nothing they can do there's nothing they can do so that's actually really really good for us uh, the question is do we block because um, we certainly could right that's not unheard of um, I'm not I think we just take it and if they sweep they sweep that's the worry, I think, is that they have some kind of a sweeper or maybe even invoke despair just to get rid of one thing so it makes it a little harder for us. But, I mean, right now, this isn't bad uh, at all. <laughs> uh, don't love what the opponent's playing, though. Mono black is always scary. Uh, so I anticipate they make a sacrifice, uh, which does make the most sense. Sure. Um... I think we sacrifice the soldier because we can unearth it and still get the attack in, right? That seems probably like the best option. Uh, perfect. So let's do this. We're going to get you out of there. Let's unearth, uh, which is going to allow us to attack in with everything. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to go all of it them at them. Excuse me. Uh, let's make sure we're maximizing the lifelink potential, but yeah, I mean, that was an easy one. Uh, that was absolutely perfect. I mean, what more can you want? We got a victory, guys. That's awesome. Game one goes to us. Let's see if we can keep this one up. By the way, you do try and get seven wins before three losses. I forgot to mention that, but guys, let's go ahead and jump into game two. Let's see if we can keep it up. All right, guys, and here we are for game number two. Now, this is a little bit of an odd hand, but I am going to try it. Uh, in general, I don't actually like this hand at all, uh, solely because we don't have any turn one plays and we are maximizing our lands at two. Uh, normally you'd kind of want three, but uh, with the not low land count, I think we can at least try it. Uh, we can lead with the deserted beach knowing that, you know, obviously it's going to come into play untapped. Uh, and so this kind of eases up on that. But, oh, and it looks like this might be a mirror match, which could be kind of interesting. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and play the veteran first. Uh, as weird as this sounds, I'd like the Sun Gold Sentinel to be able to exile something. Uh, and so for me, this feels like more of a later game play-ish. Uh, but we will see. Okay, uh, so first things first, I think we just attack and hope for the best. And then I'll go ahead and play Harbin here. Um, nice. There it is. Resolute Reinforcements. Kind of surprised they didn't uh, throw that down earlier, but that's fine. I'll take it. All right, uh, let's see what happens. Um, they could have their own veteran, in which case this makes a lot more sense, but we do have a nice little 4-3 here that's gonna help with that, so that's not a bad thing. Any land gives us Brutal Cathar as well, which is just a nice little catch-all, right? It gives us some opportunities to, to block what they're doing. Thankfully, that's not that big of a worry at all either, uh, so that's fine. Okay, uh, yeah, we're gonna Brutal Cathar. We're gonna see what their reaction is here. So what they could do is, uh, in response to this, tap the three just to be able to draw a card, in which case we actually get to attack in for six damage here, uh, which is kind of a reasonable amount of damage when we're looking to race, uh, which is certainly the idea here. Uh, and they've not dealt any damage to us yet. Certainly anticipate that changing, but uh, this really gives us a nice little edge. We've been able to kind of deal with what they've got pretty meaningfully. Uh, no cards in the graveyard for the Sentinel, though. This also gives us a way, by the way, um, to... So, with that Coven ability, uh, Sun Gold Sentinel gains Hexproof from the color of your choice until the end of the turn and can't be blocked by creatures of that color. 
The nice thing about that is um, you can kind of poke through a board stall with Sun Gold Sentinel. I don't think this is the best card, which is why it's only a two of in the deck. Uh, but it is a really reasonable card to be able to kind of poke through in mirror matches like this or uh, any other kind of mono red matchup or something along those lines. So it just helps out a little bit. Okay, board presence is vastly similar now. Uh, however, things will be changing this time. Uh, so let's do this. Um, let's Sky Strike Officer. Uh, and what do we do? What do we do? We could attack in uh, and anticipate them trading. I kind of like that plan, actually. We are the aggressor, uh, and so allowing ourselves a little bit more damage or a trade doesn't seem like the end of the world. Uh, and so I am going to go this route. It also does help out with the Sun Gold Sentinel. So even if they do block it, we still have a backup flyer and they don't. Uh, which is kind of the nice part about this. We also do get to draw a card off of the, the officer if we would like next turn. Uh, we can do that in re after blocks or something along those lines. Uh, but they obviously can't play anything this turn, so they don't have a response other than to block, uh, and this is a three-turn clock on its own, so we'll see. Awesome. It looks like they are going to take it. Uh, cool. That gets a flyer out of the way, and again, we've got another Sky Strike Officer in hand, so we are actually kind of on the, the upswing here if we can keep this going. Uh, we'll certainly see. Um, not sure what else they... I mean, we know the deck, right? So we know what most likely they will be playing. I think the biggest worry would be another Veteran. Um, or maybe a Brutal Cathar of their own. That would certainly not be ideal. What they could do is Brutal Cathar the Brutal Cathar and then get their Sky Strike Officer back, which is less than good, uh, obviously. Um, but again, the Sun Gold Sentinel here does represent a golden opportunity for us to be able to, uh, you know, basically get the Harbinger, Harbin out of the graveyard and then be able to start attacking in, even if they do manage to find some flyers. Uh, but if they don't attack here, we just get to draw a card. If they do attack, we still might get to... They do have a Brutal Cathar. Okay. So let's see what they're going to hit here, and now we have the question of do we want to draw a card. Uh, I actually do. Um, the reason being, we need to hit some lands here. Uh, we also just want to make sure that, you know, we get to, we may have to take a turn off from damage here, but we do have quite a bit of other stuff that we can hit, so we'll, we'll see. Uh, that's very scary, though. They definitely have a good, solid uh, board presence all of a sudden, so we'll do the best we can. Uh, we can use Kyla's Reconstruction this upcoming turn uh, to get two creatures out of the top seven. If we hit another Brutal Cathar, that's certainly a good one. Um, we'll see. So they're going to get six damage in. Certainly a reasonable play. Uh, let's see. I think our best bet is to go for two here, right? Um, just because we need like a Brutal Cathar here or some kind of bigger thing. Uh, both of these are quite good. So let's Brutal Cathar their Brutal Cathar, which gives us a Brutal Cathar, which means we get to Brutal Cathar another thing. <laughs> How complicated can we make this? Uh, so they're probably going to tap, uh, right? Or they just are going to take it, in which case... Well, actually, it's a good point. I don't know that they can tap. That's kind of tricky uh, because... Truthfully, they don't have a whole lot going for them after this, so we'll see. Uh, we're going to get two creatures off the battlefield, essentially, here. Wow, they are going to do it. That's kind of aggressive, uh, but cool. I'm good with it. Um, let's make sure we get the Harbin out of here, because I do think that's probably the biggest worry play. All right. Um, what are we going to do? Uh, I think we just put it here, actually. Let's get in for six. We get a little 2-2 two -two here, which is always helpful. Uh, and now, again, we actually get to draw a card off of this as well. So hopefully they don't have a Brutal Cathar. Uh, they get to do the same thing back if they draw another Brutal Cathar. We got very lucky off the top, so really this is just down to removal. And if they have it, they have it. Uh, and we really can't do too much about that. So it is what it is. Let's see what they got. Uh, feeling pretty good, right? They don't have good attacks other than the officer. 
Uh, which is a very good attack, given that they also get a 2-2 out of the deal. Uh, so, that doesn't seem bad. We also do have enough uh, lands out that if they put this in the graveyard for whatever reason, we actually do have the mana to put a 1-1 one -one on each soldier we control, which is a lot of benefit. Alright, cool. That's great. Uh, that just means they don't have a whole lot. <laughs> Um, I'm curious to see if they attack. Uh, I don't know. I mean, they could attack for three, but that doesn't seem ideal. Okay. Uh, I would definitely hold that back. Yeah, okay. I was gonna say, that seems like the right play. Uh, let's tap these, draw a card. I would love another, uh, uh, reconstruction, but that works too? Uh, yeah, so we can just win, right? All right, Brutal Cathar is such a good card. It's ridiculous. Um, I'm going to Brutal Cathar here uh, to get Flyers out of the way, and then we just Harbin. Whenever you attack with five or more soldiers. So, yep, there we go. That was a cool little back and forth with the soldiers uh, mirror match. But, guys, we are 2-0. and We are breaking the streak. Even if we lose every game from here on out, which I really hope doesn't happen, we are breaking the streak Phenomenal, guys. Let's jump into game three. All right, guys, and here we are for game number three. Uh, and yeah, this is a keep. It's not a great keep, but it's a keep. Um, we'll go for it. Uh, I like that they're mulliganing. Um, I'm assuming mono red, given they have goblins on their, their dex leaves, but maybe I'm wrong. Uh, let's just go here. And again, we just go with the, the Yodian frontliner, I think, first. All right. No, it's... Is this another mirror match? No way. Um, okay, cool. Let's go here. Uh, we're actually gonna show you off just because we're gonna play you. <clears throat> um, and I will attack in. Chances are I don't think they block this with the recruitment officer. Um, that seems like a bad block, so... Uh, the good news is, again, they did mulligan, so there is a world where we just get to out-resource them. Um, I'm not gonna block two... They have a Yodian Frontliner as well, and two Yodian Frontliners. Cool. Uh, very good. Um, I think we saved the Brutal Cathar, actually. I think. Um, hmm. It's actually a bit trickier than I expected. Uh, okay, first things first. Let's attack in here. Uh, totally anticipate them killing the Yodian Frontliner. Uh, which is great, uh, because we can capitalize on it while they can't very well. Uh, so let's do this. Let's get that out of their graveyard, and let's get our recruitment officer going. Alright, let's hope for the best. Uh, no land? Interesting. That is huge, actually. Um, excellent. Okay. Um, hmm. I think, I think the play is to do this. Um, all right, let's attack with you two. Uh, let's attack here. I'm assuming they just let this in and that's it. Just fine. Um, and again, I think we just hold the Brutal Cathar because I think that's going to be a much heavier play, right? Like that's going to be a pretty big swing. Uh, so, for whatever their three-drop play is here... Oh, it's a Brutal Cathar. <laughs> awesome. Alright, yeah, this is gonna be pretty awesome. That's fine. Uh, not super worried about that. Um, let's Brutal Cathar. <laughs> cool. Um, I'm just gonna attack in here. And get everything going, because I just want them to uh, trade off as much as they can. We get the advantage here, uh, which is kind of nice. Cool. That's fine. We clear their board, which is, I think, the most important thing. Oh, no! Okay, well, this sucks. <laughs> That's really bad. They get both their Brutal Cathars back. Yep. That's not great. And that's really not good. All right. Unfortunately, that flips these two. 
All right, maybe that was a mistake. Uh, I was hoping to like keep pressuring them and then t take away any advantage of like drawing a veteran or anything like that. I didn't put them on a backup um, Brutal Cathar, so that was just my bad. I'm gonna pass, I'm just gonna take three. Uh, thankfully we do have a little wiggle room, but it's not a lot, so this is definitely a risk. Um, sure, I mean, it's a card, it's not a great card, is it? Um, nope, 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 no attacks. All right, sick, Let's see what happens. Uh, don't feel good about it, just gonna be honest. I'm curious if they attack. It's technically, we can suit up the foundry. Oh, come on! Oh, good, it comes in on that side, I forgot. Still not great. Really not great. Wow. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do this. Might be a bit of an odd play, but they're gonna lose one of these guys, which is good. Oh no, wait, they're not. Oh crap, why did I do that? Oh, that's fine. That was such a dumb block. Why did I do this? Uh, Alright, that's fine. We drew a Brutal Cathar. <laughs> Let's get you out of there. Get our own Brutal Cathar. What do we take? Um, probably this. Alright. This just comes down to who has a Brutal Cathar. <laughs> That's literally all this is. That's a game changer. Uh, okay. It didn't attack though. Huh. That's a pretty good card. I'm not gonna attack though, obviously. This is such a weird back and forth. I love this, it's just so weird. <laughs> Uh, yeah, sure. Resolute reinforcements. You got it. I'm wondering what we need here. There's like a lot we could use for sure. Um, let's do this. So the question is, do we attack with my rail? Um, yeah, I think we do. We just get as many soldiers as we can get. Just to like... <laughs> Just to make this as difficult as possible. Wow, they just took it. I guess we could have given flying to everything if we had attacked with it all, but like, I kind of don't want to do that. I don't know. If we make it out of this, I will be amazed because that triple block was a really dumb idea. Wow. All right. Um, three, four, well, two, four, six, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, I think we just die, right? Yeah, I think we just die. That's fine. Uh, oh no, we could have lived. <laughs> we could have won. We could have blocked the... Uh, I was mathing incorrectly. Oh, that was just my own mistake. Oh, that feels really terrible. Well, we threw away a win. But you know what? We're still doing all right. Let's jump into the next one. All right, guys, here we are for the next one. Let's see what we can do. Um, yeah, this is an easy keep, actually. Oh my god, can we not have a mirror match for once? <laughs> Why are they all mirror matches? <laughs> Just got a Yodian soldier, or frontliner, excuse me. So stupid. Uh, the matcher in this game is terrible. Um, let's go here. Just gonna go here and run this out. Again, so I think we are just holding the Brutal Cathars as best we can, right? All right, we attack. Cool, that's fine. Don't particularly care about that. I mean, like, sure, you get those. That's one card we don't really run are the, uh, the Resolute Reinforcements. That's one thing that we don't put in this deck. Uh, which I'm super okay with, honestly. I think it's a good card. I don't think it's, like, amazing by any means. Um, swag. Let's do this. Let's do this. They're stuck on mana, aren't they? Um. I don't think we attack. We'll see. If they're stuck on lands, this is gonna- oh, man, crap. Ha, <laughs> ha. 
I was gonna say, that was gonna be really good, uh, but they are not anymore. <laughs> um, I'm actually gonna go here because I do wanna get this down uh, so we can kind of make some moves later. I'm gonna get the officer out of here and see if they want to tap anything uh, to draw a card, which would be a very good idea uh, in my opinion, but we'll see. Yep, makes sense. Um, so the idea is, um, can attack here, can attack here. Yeah, I think that's fine. If they want to take the trade, that's perfectly fine. Um, looks like they're not. Again, you just kind of want to get ahead in the damage race, I think, as quickly as you can, and then try and hold it. So that's cool. We're gonna do that. Uh, Siege Veteran is super good though. That's actually quite scary. Uh, it makes a lot more sense now why they did not block. All right, um, let's reveal you. All right. Um, cool. Let's do this, let's do this. I think we just keep attacking with these two and like if they wanna start double slash triple blocking, that's fine. Um, they obviously are going to get some 1-1s out of the deal here, but we might as well just go ahead and force the issue. We also are going to gain some life out of this, which is really good. They're going to 3 for 1. Uh, I guess they get 2 in response though, don't they? So that makes sense. Uh, we do still have the Mishra's Foundry. Um, part of the reason I wanted to get that down early is so we could start utilizing it. Um, right now we don't really need to, but that is an option. I think it's more of a safety net at this point. Alright, let's hope for the best. Can't believe we just threw that last game. Wow, another Siege Veteran. Okay, well I'm glad we cleared the the one ones when we did then. Honestly, that could have been really bad. Uh, so that's great. So they are going to throw a counter here. I assume they're not going to attack. <laughs> sure. Um, that's really annoying. Okay, uh, then we don't do anything and let this flip. Uh, because next turn it'll, or depending on what happens, we can just flip it again and then start to take out some of their stuff. But I think that's our, our big goal. They have to pay three if they want to kill this, which I don't think they've got great removal to do so, unless they have a Brutal Cathar. <laughs> Alright. Which even that, I guess, comes down on the Moonrage Brute side, so that really doesn't work. Oh, they have a Tactician. Sick. Uh, we actually don't run Tacticians in the deck, which is kind of interesting. But the reason being is it doesn't get hit by Kylia's Reconstruction or whatever it is. Um, and so it's not actually, in our deck, it's not actually as efficient. I think you kind of run one or the other. Um, and we just chose not to run it, so. Yeah, dude. Go for it. Um, wow, well, they're not going to attack. Interesting. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do nothing. <laughs> we can't really do anything. They have a giant seven eight. Like, what, what are we gonna do? Uh, we could attack, but that seems terrible. Wow. Okay. Well, now we might just be dead. So that's fine. Cause they just get flying on all of this. So yeah. Um, I'm not mathing it, but we're gonna be, if not dead very very close to dead <laughs> they all get get flying and plus one plus one uh well done can't do anything about it you got me fair enough all right well unfortunately that's our second loss uh which isn't great but we've been matched up against azorius soldiers like every time uh so honestly if we lose that's fine i kind of just want to play against a different deck so Arena, let's let's get on that and let's see what we do. All right, guys, here we are for our next game, and this is definitely not a keep. We got to throw that one back. Uh, this is um, somewhat regrettable keep, but I do think it's a keep. Uh, let's throw you back and we'll run with it. Um, all right, throw a soldier out there. We do have Thalia, uh, which depending on what the opponent has, that could be very good. Please don't be a soldier deck. I would really appreciate it to not be a soldier deck. Uh, let's go Thalia, slow them down a little bit. If they've got a Fading Hope, they may just burn it, um, but it doesn't seem likely, and we'll just get an attack in here. Cool. Land. That would be great. Would love a land. Would love a Sky Strike Officer. Seems like a good card right now. 
Uh, being able to draw a card is just so helpful in this kind of deck. Um, keeping in mind, if you're a new deck builder, um, or just new to the game in general, first of all, welcome. Uh, second of all, this is one of those decks that gets to do a little bit of everything. And that's so not the norm. Like, when you first learn magic, I feel like a lot of people are just like, yeah, you, you know, you kind of either choose aggro or you choose control or, you know, whatever it might be. And I do think that's pretty fair. Um, but at the same time, there are decks that have a little bit of everything. And in this case, a very good deck that has a little bit of everything. Uh, and so it's just something to consider that, you know, as you learn and hopefully progress in the game and hopefully continue to enjoy the game, um, ideally you'll start to kind of get to piece things together and become a better deck builder and start to, yeah, it might be an aggro deck, but let's make sure we've got a little disruption or a little removal or, you know, whatever it might be. Uh, those are all important things to consider. Um, all right, swag. Do we just attack? Probably. I don't know what they could do. They're mono blue, they've got three mana. It might just be a counter spell. Um, part of the other reason, by the way, you don't just run things out main phase one right now. They could have a counter and they could have a bounce spell and they may not know which one to use. Uh, and so it's up to us to not make it easy. <laughs> um, I think we put it on the first striker. Right, seems better. Get a little token out of the deal here as well, which is always good. Yep, they have a bounce spell. See? That's why it's important. Uh, we could have actually attacked with a Mistress Foundry as well. That probably would have been pretty reasonable. But now we just get to replay Thalia. And a Yodian Soldier, or Frontliner, which does actually open up the uh, the draw play, which is kind of good. See, so they have a one-mana counter. <laughs> cool. So now in response to anything they do, we just get to draw a card right away. Uh, which is pretty solid. Um, I'm assuming they're doing nothing, because they are mono blue, despite only having three mana. A little odd. Alright, let's draw a card. Again, getting to do a little bit of everything. Sky Strike Officer really opens up the door for that draw ability, and that's not normally the case with aggro decks, so it's kind of nice to have that uh, just as a, an option for us. And there we go, we got the win. I'm surprised, but we got the win. That was great. Uh, heck yeah, guys. I think we're three and two. Let's double check. Let's double check before we go too far. Uh, we're doing pretty well. I mean, it could be it could be better, but it could certainly be worse. It could be the first two days of this week. But yeah, three and two, guys. Let's jump into game six. Here we go, guys. Let's see if we can get another win. This is a rough hand. Uh, very late game hand. I think we send that one back. Uh, as much as I don't want to, I think that's the right call, so we are going to. Um, this hand's better. I mean, we'll keep it. It's not, like, amazing. I think we just throw one of the officers back. Uh, because of the replayability with Yodi and Frontliner, I think that's better. Alright, cool. See what the opponent's up to. Looks like maybe Mono Red? Definitely Mono Red. Cool. How fun! <laughs> Gotta love mono red. Uh, this is gonna be terrible, but that's fine. Um, Denek would be sick. That'd be really sick. Uh, we do also just have like power plays, right? That they may not have. So there is an option where we just kind of sneak out a win, but um, it's not it's not super likely. But that's fine. Um, we just attack, I suppose. Let's go here. Critical mass, let's go. Uh, next turn we do have the Siege Veteran coming down, which is actually a very solid card. The question becomes, do we block with the Officer if given the opportunity? Um, on the edging, specifically. And now I think we have to. That's interesting. I was gonna say, you sure about that, homie? Uh, wow, they are sure about it. All right, no, they're not. Yes, they are, no. <laughs> That's fine. All right, cool. Let's go here. Um, I think I do this. Uh, yeah, let's do this. Put that in there. Uh, we're not really blocking, right? So, I mean, we could block this, but it doesn't seem ideal. 
I don't know. We'll see. It's a lot of damage coming through. Um, I'm not sure if they really care that much, but it looks like they're going to take the kill here, which actually just gives us another... Uh, oh no! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whenever a non-token soldier... Oh, it exiles it. Oh, I'm dumb. Wow! <laughs> okay! Very good. Uh, solid. I don't think we block at the moment. As much as I really want to. Um... That's a scary life total with double mechanized warfare on the battlefield, but gotta do what we gotta do. I think we have to keep the veteran around, so we'll see. All right. Uh, this might be it, folks. We might just be dead, but we'll see. Interesting. That might change the math. Okay, swag. Let's, uh, let's... Does it matter if we throw a counter on this? Not really, does it? Um, so I think we just go here. Don't attack and anticipate needing to block everything. Um, so the reason we don't want to attack there is because A, we need the, well, we need as much as we can to be able to block the etching. Oh, that's terrible. Um, please don't have a burn spell. Of course you have a burn spell. Um, uh, yeah, we do this, I suppose. Cool. That's garbage. Um, and we just die. That was really sad. That was super, super sad. That bombard, that, that was really cool. Uh, but guys, unfortunately, that's it for us. We did a three and three run. Uh, not super great this week, but getting better, and I think that's important, right? We need to focus on the positives. We are getting a little better today. Uh, we got 200 gems and a pack, which I will happily take. Let's open up the pack. Why not? Uh, as we kind of conclude this, um, just want to reiterate how powerful this deck actually is. Uh, it does feature... Oh, sick. Yeah, Blade Coil Serpent. So cool. Uh, it does feature um, a lot of the things that you want out of a, an aggro deck, and it also features a lot of things you don't normally see. And so for that reason, I do think it's a very strong contender. Uh, unfortunately, that mono red deck just killed us in that last game. But you know what? It's okay. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much. Hope you have a great end to your week. Uh, and guys, don't forget, we are going to have the podcast returning as well as a 10,000 subscriber giveaway. So if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It'll really help us out and you'll be entered to win for like three different prizes. I think it'll be a really good giveaway. So please do check that out, guys. But thank you guys so much again. I love you all. Have a fantastic day. I'll see you tomorrow.